Namaste. We're learning the Kandasana. Three or four postures for me are the compulsory ones. The first is a kneeling back bend called the Ustrasana, the camel. Yeah. Yeah. So because the sequence of the practice of Kandasana starts with back bend. So we need to open the discs of our spine first before we practice that method. Because in the Kandasana, it's uh, like a flexion. And then when you round your back in the Kandasana, there's a probability of hurting your low back. So, but keeping your spine open, uh, you develop the skill of yeah, uh, creating yeah, healthy spaces between the discs of your spine. Good. And next compulsory position is a wide leg forward bend yeah, with uh, the combination of binding of the arms or the kurmasana. Yeah, so there are many variations of kurmasana, but for the practice of kandasana, this one is the most helpful for me with the arms and that because the sensation of the kurmasana is similar to the kandasana actually. And so this is like your uh, variation yeah, to that technique. Yeah, this is neither a deflection or an extension, but in here, you're able to gain access of your core, the bandhas. Also in the kneeling back bend, yeah, the uh, ustrasana. All right. Third position is padmasana, this one. Yeah, for obvious reason, because in the kandasana, you need to yeah, promote the flexibility of your knees, of your hips, and the joints of your limbs, and your ankles, and the feet. And padmasana is a good technique for you to develop the skill. You may also progress this to the padapadmasana. Yeah. But, or you can even fold over your legs. All right, so, and then the last is actually a variation of the Kandasana already in the reclining posture. All right, so lying down, yeah, you might open the legs first, the Supta Konasana, and you can do you know, side stretching with the arm, you know, binding over the head. Yeah. You can lightly shake the legs up and down, and then do some sacrum stretching, this one, my favorite, you know, to prepare the spot of the low back. Mm. All right, and then yeah, you practice your yeah reclining kandasana. Yeah, so this is like the kandasana already, but in a reclining position. Yeah, so the benefit of this one, uh, it's lighter for the joints, yeah, of the knees and the feet, but very light that you need to gain access of the banda so you can draw everything to the midline. Because in the kandasana, although externally the legs open, yeah, but internally you need to draw you know, the joints back into the midline of the body. And that's the role of the bandas. And then also here you can stretch the side trunk. Yeah, and then yeah, you develop the skill of binding your feet yeah, without them slipping away. Okay, and yeah, once those preparatory techniques are mastered or practiced lightly, you can do already the Kandasana and the sitting position. And so those preparatory drills will help you first develop the sensitivity of your spine because in the Kandasana, you don't, you don't want to be rounding your back. Next, yeah, they train you to withstand the pressure, of course, of the rotation of the limbs. And then finally, more important is actually they will help you uh, access the inner uh, dynamics support, yeah, specifically the Udiyana Bandha, because those techniques are really helpful for developing the energy locks. Yeah, and then when they are light already, that means <laughs> you're able to yeah, safely and lightly practice your kandasana than sitting because you've already prepared yeah, the requirements and the body parts affected yeah, and practiced when we do this technique. Good. It's kandasana. Yeah. So this is the sum of the many parts. Yeah, so this is the expression of the many years of preparation, yeah, not just the body, but also the breath. Because in here, you need to be able to breathe lightly yeah, so you don't tighten the body and yeah, you achieve the energetic benefit of this technique. Beautiful. Good. See you in the next one. Namaste.